This is when the trumpet shall sound, they will come back. Lord, help us to remain faithful, faithful to that end. I'm asking you also to be with all the sick, Lord, wherever they may be throughout the island of Bermuda, throughout the world. Lord, I'm asking you that where is pain to subside, where there is discomfort to comfort. Lord, I'm asking you them who is all balanced mentally, physically, and spiritually. I'm asking you to help them also because sickness comes in many forms. So I'm asking you to heal them and touch them, that they would draw, you draw them close to you and they would give you glory, honor, and praise. Mm -hmm. Lord, we bring all them that's in restrooms, in prisons, throughout the island of Bermuda, throughout the world. I'm asking you to be of our leaders, of our churches, leaders of the world. Lord, you are the great leader. You are God all by yourself. Lord, we want to thank you for your Holy Spirit. And as uh, Lana, Dr. Lana Gibbons brings forward uh, the word tonight, I'm asking you to hide him behind the cross. So what he have, what, what you have put in his heart to present, I'm asking you to help us to apply it, and help us to do your bidding. I'm asking you also to be for our children in a special way, and our grandchildren and great grands I'm asking you to watch over them, Lord, and speak to the hearts and mind, Lord, because we know that we didn't chose you, you chose us. So you commissioned us to go into the highways and byways and to tell others about your love and your soon coming. Lord, press upon our hearts and minds that we will go and do your work while it's, while it's calm. Lord, and when we thank you again, for the Sabbath, thanking you for the fellowship, thanking you for Zoom and that we can communicate in this way. And we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Arnold. Amen. We just want to take a few moments to just thank Dr. Lee Gibbons for coming this evening to speak to us um, on this present health message. So, Dr. Lee, if you take over. Okay, it's really, really good to be here with you all. Um, just give me an idea, how much time do I have? I would say you have at least 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Yeah. Okay, uh, Brother Talek, you are uh, rolling the slides for me. Um, if, you, if you like, you can do it yourself. Um, Remember the issue we had before? Well, let, let, let's get started and I'll show you how. Okay. See those arrows in the lower left-hand corner of your screen or right-hand corner? You can advance it by clicking the, to the right. Oops, and I click there, the bar comes up where you can mute, mute or... Um, no, no, it's like, you see this, can you see the slides? Yep, I see it. Yeah, in the, in the lower corner, maybe you're right, I'm on a Mac or the left I side, you have those, some arrows pointing. I see it. Um, let me try something. I see it, but it doesn't advance. Um, let's see. I'm gonna give you. Uh, yeah, make, make, make him the make him the host um, in order I, for you to move it. I did. I made. You have to accept the host. Okay. Accept the host. Yeah. Yes. On your screen. See something on your screen? I see. You are the host. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, you click on that, Lee. Okay, it needs to come back up again. Okay, let's do this. I made you co-host and host. <laughs> yeah. You have it, you just have to know, accept it. Oh, you see it, Lee? Where's the accept? 
Well, I think just try moving the, the buttons to see what you can. Oh, you, you move your mouse. Uh, when I tried the new button, it's right in the corner where that. Um, no, you don't want to mute button, Lee. I know that. The thing is that um, where the arrow is. Yeah. Uh, that's where the mute button comes up on my, because this is my. Uh, Okay, you, you can you start. Um, I'll do the advancing, go ahead. Okay, all right. You know, when I was thinking about this this whole um, idea, uh, if you go back before that, uh, I'll just say next. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was thinking about this, you know, uh, I, I was thinking about God and his, his great love, and we know that he is all knowing. And the very fact that God knows the beginning from the end, he, he knew that this would, this would come about. And so God is not left with, you know, not knowing what to do. And in creating mankind, I believe even at the very beginning that God put within us that that which we would need to endure until he came back again. And so the, so um, God is in, in his wisdom has provided uh, a solution. And I want to talk about some of the lifestyle factors that, that God has provided for us that can enable us to, even during this time, we hear a lot about um, there is no cure, but I, I would like to suggest that, that, that God has provided a, a way of escape for us. And if you go to the next slide, I'm going to explain what I mean by that. Uh, if you look at this slide, it, it looks at um, different phases uh, of, uh, I guess you can call it COVID-19, the non-infection phase, phase one, two, and three. And what I want to focus on this, uh, this slide here is phase two. And what we understand is that 80% uh, of individuals um, do quite well. Um, a, a number of them do not experience any, any symptoms, and there are those that experience minimal symptoms, and they recover quite well. So the question is, why is it that 80% of the people do uh, perfectly well, um, even though they're exposed to it? And this is to do with the body's uh, immune system, how God has created us uh, to heal and the self-healing mechanisms um, that God has provided for us. And whatever we can do to enhance the body's own immune system would increase the likelihood that even if we were exposed to it, that we would recover. So we're gonna talk about those factors, the immune system and how we can enhance the body's own healing mechanisms and the practical things that we can do. Now on the phase two, we also see 20%, and this is in the black. And these are individuals that go on and to experience hospitalization. Uh, they have various other issues. And for a number of them, they have actually passed away because of this. So we will conclude that somehow the immune system of individuals that fall into this category uh, is not sufficiently strong enough to uh, fight against and to um, get them through this. So let's take a look at what we can do during the non-infection phase, phase one, that will increase the likelihood that we will go into the 80% group that recover. So let's uh, go to the next slide. Okay, so here we see uh, lifestyle factors. And of course, we hear a lot about um, covering our, our mouths and, and uh, our, you know, all the uh, distance methods and all of these things, quarantine and all that we are experiencing. But um, there are things that we can do to influence the body's own immune system and that, you know, our diet, our exercise, our uh, sleeping habits, sunlight, balance, uh, even a, a hydrotherapy procedure we call a contrast uh, shower. We will talk a little bit about, and of course, 
trust in God. And these are the factors. We're going to talk a little bit about some of them as they relate to the immune system. You go to uh, the next slide. Um, this um, talks about um, what we would add to some of those uh, lifestyle factors. And of course, um, hot baths, uh, this is another, you know, hydrotherapy, uh, moist tea pack, steam baths, um, all a part of water therapy or hydrotherapy. And we've also added vitamin C, vitamin D, and zinc, and, and some other uh, uh, nutrients that we can take in that have been shown to be effective. Um, so all of these things increase the likelihood that we will have an immune system that is effective, the one God designed us to have. And um, let's go to uh, the next slide where we bring in phase three. This is during hospitalization. And um, what we do know is that um, um, IV, uh, vitamin C, has been shown to be effective. Uh, in fact, there is a trial going on now uh, that uh, is actually finishes at the end of September. And we, if we get uh, the time, we'll talk a little bit about um, um, vitamin C, and this is intravenous vitamin C. Uh, let's go to the next page. Okay, this uh, gives, us, gives us a picture of what we're looking at here. And uh, in a, to the far left, you see the lung. And the, as you see the arrow moving over, you see what looks like a bunch of grapes. But in actual fact, what we're looking at is the lung sacs. And this is where the air exchange and carbon dioxide exchange takes place in the lungs so that the uh, organs of our bodies can get that oxygen, get rid of the carbon dioxide so that we can be well. And what happens is it fills up with actually um, liquid. And so there is this inflammation, there's this damage. So we're not getting the oxygen exchange. And this is why individuals ending up needing to be put on a ventilator. Uh, people who are older, people who are smoking, people who have a number of pre-medical conditions, previous medical conditions, anywhere from asthma to heart disease to um, lung problems. And what's consistent with all of these situations is a compromised immune system. The immune function is not uh, actually compromised in all of those conditions. People who have heart disease and diabetes, and so all of these health conditions actually uh, help to suppress the immune system. So what we're going to focus on as we go forward is things to enhance our immune system so that we can function at our best. Let's go to the next slide. OK, so this is a summary of uh, factors we know uh, impact on the immune system in a negative way. Uh, emotional distress. Um, Fermented foods, um, hard cheese, alcohol, a number of these things is, can affect our immune system. Um, alcohol, you see drugs, cortisone, um, aspirin, cancer drugs, pesticides. Uh, all of these affect negatively our immune function. Smoking, lead, mercury, air pollution, cadmium, uh, being overweight. Uh, actually uh, suppresses the body's immune function. Uh, there are certain immune cells that help us out. One of them is called neutrophils, and another is macrophages. And these are uh, white blood cells that the body uh, needs to help us in fighting against uh, all sorts of viruses and bacteria. Uh, so let's move on. Um, these are uh, some other immune uh, factors. Uh, sleeping less than seven hours a night. Uh, the immune system works best with your sleeping between eight, eight and nine hours of sleep a night. But less than seven hours uh, actually suppresses our immune cells. And one of the cells is called natural killer cells. It 
Yeah, that's on the bottom there. Uh, oh. uh, and what happens, food allergies. Oh, yeah, I finally got it. <laughs> okay. Um, you've got um, vitamin A, uh, deficiencies in vitamin A, B, C, D, essential fatty acids, uh, the mineral zinc, uh, all of those uh, deficiencies suppress our immune system. Oh, excuse uh, me. Learn take of green vegetables, uh, fruits, and other vegetables, and whole plant foods, low intake of whole plant foods. Uh, we know that after the fall, God uh, uh, added the green herbs of the fields. And uh, actually, the immune cells work much better when we have a high intake of, of green vegetables or leafy green vegetables. Um, lack of exercise on one hand and too much exercise on the other hand. Uh, not eating at regular times and a high intake of animal products. All of those uh, help to uh, actually decrease the body's own immune function. Uh, let's, let's go on. Uh, the next slide. Uh, this particular slide was looking at a study that actually looked at sugar by itself. So um, a half a cup of sugar or equivalent to eight tablespoons or a third cup of honey or three and three quarter cups of orange juice. So any of those combinations consumed at one time uh, resulted in a significant suppression in immune function. And if you look at that uh, chart there, you see this red line that's going down across and then it's moving up slowly. And at the bottom, you see the numbers, um, zero hours, one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. If you're going up the two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, we're looking at the function of one of our immune cells called neutrophils, which are suppressed when we take in a high amount of sugar. You go to the next, um, move that ahead. So what they discovered is the neutrophils ability to digest and destroy uh, bacteria was decreased nearly 50% after two hours of consuming this high sugar intake. And five hours later, it was still 20% um, suppressed. So high intakes of, of sugar impacts negatively on our immune system. Uh, the next slide. Now, this is an interesting uh, slide. Uh, towards the left, you see all the Cs. And that's referring to vitamin C. And it's all pointing into this white blood cell. And what it says is the vitamin C in white blood cell is 50 times higher than the white blood cells, than the uh, vitamin C that's circulating in our bloodstream. Now, sugar and vitamin C look quite similar. So what can happen if you're consuming a high intake of sugar the cell neutrophils, these white blood cells, are taking in vitamin C, which is preventing the body from absorbing this. Um, I mean, the sugar is displacing the vitamin C. And the vitamin C is critical to the function of our white blood cells. So we're looking at the white blood cell can only destroy 25% as many of the bacteria and the viruses because the sugar is displacing the vitamin C. So this is one of the reasons why the um, high intake of sugar can negatively impact on the immune system because it's uh, uh, replacing the vitamin C. So let's go to the next slide. Um, and what you see here is uh, blood sugar levels at 120 uh, milligrams per deciliter. And this is considered uh, higher than ideal blood sugar. Well, white blood cells ability to engulf bacteria can be destroyed, decreased by 75%. That's just a blood sugar of 120. 
Uh, ideally, you want your blood sugar under 100. So from 17 to 99. So there are a lot of people whose blood sugar is 120 or higher. And this is probably one of the reasons why people who are diabetic have a higher, higher risk and um, issues who, who, who have COVID-19, the body's ability to fight effectively for us. Let's move ahead. Um, so it can take four to six hours before the vitamin C levels to get back to normal just by consuming um, high levels of, of sugar. Next. So the Western diets activate the innate uh, natural immune system and it can impair the body's ability to function properly, uh, leading to what we call chronic inflammation. And uh, inflammation, when we think of inflammation, if I smash my finger, uh, it gets red, it gets swollen. And um, actually that's good in a sense because what the body is doing is, um, is actually makes it easier for the white blood cells to get into that area and clean up that mess. It gets our attention so we can focus on what that issue is. But what happens is uh, if we're eating and living the wrong way, the way we shouldn't, then the immune system, this part of this inflammation actually uh, uh, starts to rise at a level we may not even understand. We may not have any symptoms of it, but it's a low grade inflammation. And then when something like a virus comes on, the body can, cannot function optimally. Uh, let's go on. Next slide. This just gives you an idea of the amount of sugar, teaspoons of sugar that are in different uh, quantities of, of different uh, foods. You can see in this example, uh, haagen ice cream, uh, 27 teaspoons of sugar, um, yogurt, this is a uh, typical sweetened yogurt, uh, six and a half, Skittles, 12 teaspoons, and uh, up to the top left, you see Snickers bars, and uh, the large Snickers bars is over 17 and a half teaspoons of sugar. So we see the level of these uh, unnatural sugars, and we know that 25 teaspoons of sugar uh, can re result in a 50% uh, depression in our immune cell function. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Now, when we look at starch, however, or whole grains as this example, uh, in, the, in the study, there was no decrease in the white blood cells ability to um, destroy these toxins. So when we eat the whole food, um, it doesn't depress the immune system. It's when we consume high amounts of the free sugars that are taken away from the natural, uh, natural foods. Next. Fasting, um, 24 to 48 hours. And you know, a number of us, when we feel not feel too well, sometimes we don't feel like eating. And this is a good thing. Uh, it increases the neutrophils of these white blood cells ability to engulf uh, bacteria, the index by 50%. And that's uh, from 24 to 48 hours of not consuming uh, uh, food. Uh, so drinking plenty of water, uh, if you're just not feeling yourself, uh, the uh, white blood cells actually work much better uh, for the first 24 to 48 hours. Next slide. Uh, when we were talking about vitamin A was one of those, those uh, factors that are important for our immune system. And these are our foods that are high in vitamin A. You can see your carrots and spinach, and kale, sweet red peppers, cantaloupe, uh, black eyed peas and pumpkin are all very high in vitamin A. So these are foods to make sure you're getting enough of to, uh, for your immune system to function optimally. Now these foods 
uh, the body has what we call, I mean, these foods have what we call carotenoids and they are converted into vitamin A in the body. And that's probably the safest way to have it because um, if we take vitamin A straight, uh, we can end up with too much. But when we take it in the form of foods, the body will absorb just what it needs. So if you need to jot down a couple of these things, um, that would be something good. So that's vitamin A. Uh, let's go on. Um, vitamin C, and these are the highest foods in vitamin C. The strawberries, mangoes, sweet potatoes, kale, pineapple, kiwi, and your citrus too, like your oranges and uh, grapefruits and all of those, those foods in the citrus family. Uh, broccoli and papaya. So those are all good sources of vitamin C. Next. Um, essential fatty acids. And these are fats that the body doesn't make. You have to get it from your foods. And we think of a lot of um, you know, fish oils and they do have these essential fats, but they do have other things. And one of the uh, higher levels of contaminants are um, mercury and other contaminants, as long as the type of uh, uh, saturated fatty acids, which are actually suppress the immune function. So it's better to get it more from a plant base. And you see uh, flaxseed is number one. Chia seeds are pretty high also. And your walnuts, soybeans, uh, some, some of the, the spinach and the Brussels sprouts also have your essential fatty acids. Uh, next, uh, B vitamins. And this is where you have your whole grains your brown rice, your millet, your legumes, your nuts and seeds. Uh, sunflower seeds and almonds are particularly high in your B vitamins and your dark leafy vegetables. So these are all examples. And even citrus fruits have your B vitamins. So a uh, wide uh, array of these natural uh, foods, plant-based foods that are high in these uh, vitamins that we know protect the body uh, and help the immune system function optimally. Next. Okay, let's take a look uh, at mushrooms, believe it or not, um, three and a half ounces or close to a cup of blanched white blood mushrooms at regular meals for one week. It increases the antibody. Now this IgA antibody is actually in our tears, our nasal passages and in our mouth. So when we're talking about um, taking in this virus, it's, this is what we're looking at, you know, it's there for the protection for the nose, the eyes and the mouth. Well, these antibodies are in these secretions and they increased uh, 56% and remained high for two weeks uh, after they had stopped uh, utilizing it. So this is a three week study. If you go to the next page, and you can see uh, the antibodies going up. Uh, to the left, you see uh, the first week, and then the second week, it was still high. At the end of three weeks, it was back down to the level it was before they were consuming uh, uh, the mushroom. So uh, it's one thing that helps to uh, push up the, the uh, immunoglobulin A, which is in our respiratory system. So anything like your colds and of course this, this particular virus. Our uh, next. And um, this was uh, looking at a variety of different uh, mushrooms and the ones that was most effective for lowering it was the uh, white bottom uh, mushroom, which decreased it more than any of the others. Um, okay, let's uh, go to the next one. Um, this was an interesting study that looked at vegetable intake, individuals that were consuming uh, five or more servings of vegetables a day, compared with those who were consuming two or less a day. And you can see the 
improvement with the antibody response. This was actually for seniors. They gave them a vaccinations and the seniors that had the, um, the high intake of fruits and vegetables had a much better response than those who had a low intake of fruits and vegetables. Uh, you hear a lot about vaccines and they're looking for, you know, coming out with the vaccine, but believe it or not, if your immune system is, is compromised, um, the vaccine may not really work for you. So the effective uh, thing to do, the best thing we can do is to make sure that our immune system is actually functioning optimally. And even if we did take a vaccine, we would have a better, a better response uh, by consuming and following these uh, dietary practices we're talking about. Uh, next slide. Uh, this was an interesting study that just looked at gargling water uh, three times a day, uh, reduced the incidence of upper respiratory tract infection. That's in your nasal passages and, and um, the sinuses and this, that, that part of our, our respiratory system. And it, the infection by 40%, um, just gargling. So gargling water and you can drink the water after or uh, so water is uh, a very important thing. Just gargling uh, improved uh, immune function. Next. This is looking at garlic. Now garlic is, uh, we heard a lot about it. And there, actually there's only one study that was really uh, double blind, very, what we would call a really good uh, clinical study not that uh, it couldn't have been done, but it was only this particular study was only tried once. So we don't have a lot of studies that um, duplicate what was done in this study. But what you see here is fewer curls, uh, 25 versus 65 in the active treatment group. And they were uh, taking a uh, supplement, uh, a garlic in a capsule form. And, and when you look at the days that they were challenged, this is looking at the entire group, 111 in total days versus 366. So that's with all the signs and symptoms and the issues people have uh, when they have a cool and the coughing and, and the scratchy throat and all, the, all of that and how long that prolonged. So garlic is, is something that's very, very good for helping our immune system. Uh, next, next slide. Uh, the longer the duration of symptoms were uh, one and a half days for those who had the garlic versus five days who didn't have the garlic. And one of the things we know that uh, garlic does, it increases the level of IgA, this immunoglobulin, um, this immune part of our immune system that's in our mucous membrane. So garlic helps uh, the immune system from, um, and we think of uh, issues that may be related to curls and even this virus from, from it, the example of getting it, uh, helping your immune system in terms of your respiratory system. Next slide. I thought I'd put in a couple of recipes uh, that you can jot down on make, taking garlic. Uh, you want enough garlic to uh, capsules to provide 4,000 micrograms per day or equivalent to, this is a type of um, compound in garlic, but it's equivalent to two to four cloves of fresh garlic. So if you have a supplement, and a supplement you're looking at uh, probably close to a thousand milligrams of garlic as a, as a supplement. So if you don't have any symptoms, uh, you can take a garlic capsule or something like that, or you can use garlic on a daily basis and that will keep your immune system uh, up, help to keep it functioning best. So uh, what you can do is one to two cloves, two to three times a day. So you can mince the garlic and leave it for about eight minutes. And then you can mix it with some type of a liquid and drink it right away. And that's, that's a quick, 
quick way of um, uh, consuming garlic. Um, you reason you leave it for about eight minutes um, after it's chopped, it develops that components in the garlic that helps us uh, fight immune, immune uh, improve our immune system and other parts of our, our overall health and well-being. Uh, the next slide. Uh, this is a uh, Russian called Russian penicillin. Uh, four cloves of garlic, a uh, quart of water, uh, one red onion, uh, the juice of one whole lemon. And you could add a pinch of salt and then you blend it. Um, and then you can drink it freely throughout the day. So that's uh, uh, the reason they called it uh, Russian penicillin. In fact, garlic was used during World War I when they didn't have the antibiotics. And they would use the, the juice of the garlic to help to disinfect the wounds of, uh, of individuals who were uh, in battle in the war. And uh, so garlic is good. So that's one, one recipe you can, you can try. Uh, the next, next page. Uh, this is uh, called syrup. Um, a half a red onion, four to five cloves of garlic. Uh, half a cup of lemon juice and a quarter cup of honey. Um, you can blend it to smooth and you can take it like a cough syrup, one to two tablespoons a day, uh, morning, midday, afternoon. Um, you can also add a half an inch of fresh ginger. Uh, it can be added to the recipe. Um, fresh ginger helps with our immune system. So this is a, a homemade uh, remedy that you can uh, put together that, that may be beneficial for um, any type of an infection that you might have. Okay, next, next slide. Um, elderberry extract, you may see this at a health food store or, or Zambu, Zambuco. I don't know how to pronounce it that quite well. But basically it's using the elderberry extract and um, we have, I've actually made it using the dried elderberries. You boil it uh, for a certain period of time, you add sweetener to it. And um, so in this particular study, um, they used it in influenza A and B and almost 90% of the individuals that had the elderberry um, group were, did well with two to three days versus six days in individuals that didn't have the elderberry. Um, it compared uh, favorably with the anti-influenza drug, Tamiflu, a metadin, and the dosage is two tablespoons per day for children and four tablespoons uh, per day for adults. So this is another uh, plant-based immune enhancing um, plant. Uh, next slide. Uh, moderate exercises, most days of the week and improved uh, immunity and decreased illness rates, uh, reduced uh, sickness, sick days by 25 to 50% in this particular study. Uh, next one. Next. Um, this was um, actually children, go back. Go back one. Um, just six minutes of exercise by children increased their white blood cells by one third. So the uh, activity of the white blood cell was increased 30% uh, just after six minutes of exercise. So uh, it doesn't take a lot of exercise to really get your immune system up and working for you. Uh, the next slide um, looks at uh, older individuals. And we know that uh, uh, elderly uh, individuals uh, tend to have more um, higher risk of complications uh, with uh, COVID-19 and upper respiratory tract infection. A uh, 12 week study walking and 20% uh, uh, of the group got infection, had infections. In the running group, 8% got infections. And those who were sedentary, who were not getting any activity at all, 50% of that group ended up with infection. So we can see the level of infection decreasing as the level of exercise increased. 
from nothing to walking and to running. So exercise is definitely an important factor in uh, boosting our immune system. Our uh, next. Okay, well, let's look at a couple of uh, supplements and uh, zinc is one we probably heard a lot about. Uh, between 10 and 25 milligrams a day is the dosage. And I just listed uh, some of the different white blood cells that zinc actually improves their function. So you got neutrophils, T cells, natural killer cells, macrophages. So a wide range of different immune cells that work in different ways, all working together to keep us well. Now, uh, a food that might give us close to, as close as we can get to the therapeutic trose is actually hemp seed, and that's a quarter cup. I actually have that at the ABC. A quarter cup of hemp seed gives you about four milligrams of zinc, um, which, is a, which is a good dose. And maybe in the whole food form, that may be uh, something helpful. That could be added to a smoothie or something like that, uh, or added to a cereal or something. Um, let's go to the next slide. Um, uh, pumpkin seed, you can see that right at the bottom. A quarter cup of pumpkin seed doesn't have as much zinc, but it does have some zinc and most of us, more of us have probably had pumpkin seeds as opposed to having zinc. But for your immune function, uh, perhaps the hemp seed would be uh, a higher, a better, better option. You wouldn't, have, you wouldn't have to consume as much. It gave you a good uh, boost in your zinc levels. Um, Next slide. Uh, selenium is another, uh, it's a mineral that's very helpful for improving immune function. And um, the therapeutic dose you can see there is from 50 to 200. And just two Brazil nuts will provide a therapeutic dose of selenium. So Brazil nuts are, are, are very good in providing a selenium, which helps your natural killer cells work very well. You don't have to consume much of it uh, to give yourself a therapeutic dose of selenium. Our next slide, our tofu. Uh, that gives us a cup of tofu. It's about uh, 46 um, units of uh, selenium. Uh, almost close to the lower level. So uh, tofu is another example of a food that should help with your uh, selenium levels and the immune function. Next, vitamin C. Now you probably hear more about vitamin C than anything else. And um, therapeutic dosage uh, is between 1,000 and 2,000 milligrams. Now, most times if you look at uh, vitamin C and supplement, um, the supplements may be like uh, one large um, compressed tablet uh, containing about a thousand milligrams or uh, one gram is what you would see. And, um, and we talked about vitamin C before and how that the, uh, some of our immune cells function bat, uh, better with vitamin C. And you can see all the different um, immune cells that are improved by vitamin C and natural killer cells, macrophages, T cells, and neutrophils. And we know that neutrophils are very high amount of vitamin C. Um, now, what we do know that um, one to three grams a day of oral vitamin C, that's by mouth, so that's one to 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C uh, shorten the stay of individuals in the intensive care unit in, in the hospital, hospital by 8.6% in, in six studies. Um, um, so, 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 so there's, there's evidence getting yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so what, what we see here is, is, is 
is, is actual um, recent studies that show that um, consuming vitamin C early actually lowered the, um, the length of stay of patients in the ICU. And what we do know that individuals that are sick or critically ill, their level of vitamin C in, their, in the blood is suboptimal, is, very, is low, it's not what it should be. And anytime you're under a level of stress, the body utilizes vitamin C to help you. And so the vitamin C levels decrease. So it's important to actually um, increase um, uh, the level of vitamin C, especially individuals who are unwell or people who are in the hospital setting, um, vitamin C uh, could be a, an important uh, factor in, in this. So let's go to the next, step, the next slide. Vitamin D, um, uh, 800 to 1,000 international units a day. Uh, so it helps with, with the proper functioning of our immune cells. And uh, a number of studies have shown it can reduce the risk of a cold by 50%. So um, vitamin D levels and low vitamin D levels are, have been showed associated with higher rates of cancer and a number of other health issues. So uh, vitamin D is, is something individuals can take that uh, it's not gonna harm you in any way and definitely can support the body's immune system. Uh, let's go for next. Now, um, in the early stages of, of COVID-19, um, there's a, a doctor in um, New York, Dr. Andrew Weber. And what he did was, he's a pulmonologist, critical care specialist, uh, works in Long Island, New York hospitals. And his intensive care patients, he was giving them IV vitamin C. Uh, 1,500 milligrams uh, through the veins, uh, vitamin C four to five times a day. And um, uh, let's go to the next slide. And this is where he talks about this uh, benefit to the patients. Uh, the patients who receive vitamin C uh, did significantly better than those who did not get vitamin C. Uh, it helps tremendous amount but it's not highlighted because it's not a sexy drug. So this was his comment on <laughs> the use of uh, intravenous vitamin C. And what he did, he got that information from uh, what they were doing in China using IV um, vitamin C, which was shown to improve the health of, of, of patients that they were doing, doing better by consuming, by having vitamin C as a part of the treatment. Uh, the next slide. Um, he went on to say vitamin C in coronavirus patients dropped dramatically when they suffer uh, sepsis in, in the inflammatory spots uh, that happens in, um, in vitamin in um, individuals who uh, um, have really a hard, hard time. Um, what happens is the body overreacts to the infection and the body starts, as it, as it were, attacking itself which leads to the, uh, the fluid buildup in the lungs. And so vitamin C helps to um, slow this process down or maybe even prevent it. Uh, it makes all the sense, he says, in the world to try and maintain this level of vitamin C. So this is his conclusion. So let's go to the next slide. Uh, Jason Molent. A uh, spokesperson for Northwell, this is a, a group of hospitals in uh, New York. Uh, he operates 27 hospitals, uh, including the Atlantic Sea one in Manhattan. He said that vitamin C was being widely used as a coronavirus treatment throughout the system. So vitamin C, along with other things they were utilizing, I was thought, thought it was important to put this, put this out there. Um, it's not hocus pocus, uh, vitamin C has its place and this whole, um, um, you know, issues that people may, may have. Our next slide. 
okay, in three studies uh, not involving COVID-19 patients, and with patients needed to be on ventilators uh, for over 24 hours, vitamin C shortened the duration of ventilators by 18%. Uh, this, was, this was not, uh, these are just paid patients who were on, on ventilators. This uh, had nothing to do with COVID-19, but it demonstrated that people did better by having um, vitamin C. In 18 clinical studies, um, ICU patients, IV, vitamin C, 7,000 milligrams per day, shortened I, uh, intensive care units stay by 44%. So I think the take home message here, uh, anyone you know, if you know who's uh, in the hospital and they could get some vitamin C and um, in, I think that would be a, a good addition to whatever else they're doing. Um, most people, it's not gonna be any issues. Um, very few side effects, if, if any. And um, we, we see a lot of um, vitamin C where they have it in these little tubes and you can put it in water like an Everacin and they could drink it. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's worth a go. Uh, we do know that, as I said before, individuals who are ill or critically ill, or hospitalized, have <laughs> low levels of vitamin C. And we see the uh, benefits of, of having vitamin C in the studies we talked about. Thus far. Our uh, next. Okay, I think we uh, so so it takes now it takes one to four grams of vitamin C a day uh, in critically ill patients to increase the blood levels of vitamin C to normal. So this is probably why uh, uh, the supplement form must probably be a good for people who are ill because it takes uh, a lot more to get it up to normal. So um, this is something that is good. Uh, I don't wanna get into the next paragraph. It talks a little bit about, um, but the whole process where the immune system is compromised and then it overreacts and, uh, and starts uh, destroying itself. Uh, think of it as friendly fire. And uh, when the immune system is out of balance because of poor lifestyle choices and habits, then when it uh, meets a challenge like some virus or the other, it cre can create a situation where the immune cells, especially these ones we call neutrophils, can actually uh, not only attack the viruses, but it ends up attacking our natural cells, which can bring about this damage and destruction where now the lung is filling up with fluids and uh, blood clotting and all sorts of things can happen where people can die in a short period of time. So um, vitamin C is definitely something that we want to uh, add to whatever else we're doing. And uh, we don't need a prescription for it. Uh, next slide. Next slide. Okay. and. Um, so clinical trials on the effectiveness of intravenous vitamin C, this is taking place now in 140 subjects, patients, and we'll see how that comes out in our September. Okay, let's go forward. Next. Okay, we're gonna talk a little bit about hydrotherapy or the use of water. Um, there actually, actually um, water and security is the treatment of uh, any type of infection. And um, let's uh, go back to uh, what was done some years ago. Uh, the next slide gives you an example of what we're talking about. Here. <clears throat> Hello. In nineteen tea and toast with some peanut butter because it's eight o'clock. So you need to eat something before you get ready for bed. But I know that we eat lunch late, so you're not going to eat a whole lot. Raquel, Raquel, offer some of that peanut butter and toast, please. Hello. Hi. Am I still on? Peanut yes. butter and toast? Well, if you're going to bed, I wouldn't eat the peanut butter with the toast, only because peanut butter is <laughs> it's, it's harder to digest because it's got all the fat and all of that. So it would take a longer time. So I would have something that's not as heavy as the peanut butter 
maybe just a toast or some fruit with it, rather than the peanut butter, especially if you're going to bed. Anyway, getting back to um, um, 1918, there was uh, what they labeled the Spanish influenza pan pandemic. And what happened is 500 million people worldwide, or a third of the world's population, was uh, influenced by this, this flu. 50 million people died worldwide, and 675,000 in the US. We know now approximately 100,000 have died in the US. So this flu, a lot more people died. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about the intervention, and the reason why we're going to talk about it is because uh, one of the methods used that, that demonstrated and showed an effective results in individuals was the use of water. And so we're going to talk about this. So what they did, they did have isolation, personal hygiene, quarantine, disinfectants, uh, limitations in public gatherings, but this wasn't evenly applied. So in, in some areas, there was this, uh, you know, limitations of gatherings and all, in other areas, it didn't, didn't happen. So that may have been part of the reason why, um, you know, a lot more people died as a result of it. Uh, they had no vaccines, no antibiotics. Uh, let's go to the next page. Next slide. Now, the Army Camp Hospital data, and that's what we're looking at on this slide. Um, this was the best care at that time. So 20% got the Spanish flu, 16.7% uh, of the personnel uh, contracted pneumonia. And pneumonia is inflammation of the lung, and this is the factor that is associated with a lot of the individuals that uh, needed to go on ventilators as a result of this inflamed lung and the fluid and all of that. Now, 40% of those that developed the pneumonia died. Okay, so death rate overall 6.7%, 1.3 of the Army camp personnel died. So this was at the uh, Army hospital and those that were treated there. The next slide looks at another group during the same time. If we go to that next slide, this was at Hutchinson City Health Officers Report. Now, more than 90 of 100 dorm students and faculty were diagnosed with influenza. Now, the treatment they received was their nursing care, uh, a diet, a healthy diet, rest, and they are. Uh, continued for two to five days after apparent recovery. Uh, no drugs, and they used hydrotherapy, which is hot and cool to the chest and throat and abdomen. None of them got pneumonia and no one died. So this was the impact of a healthy diet and the rest and all the things that we talk about in terms of lifestyle and inter intervention, and they provide it and they use hydrotherapy. So we're gonna talk a little bit about hydrotherapy now. If you go to the next slide, and a couple of things that you can do. Uh, first of all, it improves the circulation in the small blood vessels we call microcirculation, uh, enzymatic activity of lysosomes, and these are in the white blood cells, and they kill cool viruses, influenza, and other viruses. And these lysosomes are found in our tears, in our salivary, and in other mucous membranes. And they are improved by hydrotherapy. This contrast, hot and cool, helps these uh, lysosomes, which help to kill the viruses. Just think of it, the white blood cell engulfing these, um, these foreign agents, and then these enzymes digesting and killing all these um, viruses and bacteria. Okay, next slide. Okay, hot fermentations can increase the activity of white blood cells by two to 300%. So just think of it, you know, the white blood cells are just uh, patrolling through the bloodstream, throughout the body, and then you apply this hot 
fomentations and their activity increases up to 300%. Now, this is what they were utilizing way back in the Spanish flu, uh, or none of the individuals died. So it's hot treatments followed by a brief cool, uh, stimulates the, your, your natural killer cells, monocytes, lymphocytes, all of these are uh, powerful cells that help our immune system. Next, next slide. Um, now the activity, all I want you to focus on is where the yellow is. So the temperature between 103.3 and 105.8 was shown to be very effective in increasing fever, this particular type of protein called heat shock and increasing the immune response. Now, we're not telling you to do something to raise it to that level or how to do that. We're not gonna go into that, but just want you to underscore the fact that as our temperature goes up, the immune system is engaged. And if we know what temperature it is and we know how to treat it using uh, hydrotherapy or water treatment, then we can effectively use it to our advantage. I'll turn to the next slide. And let's go to the next slide. Oh, you know what? This doesn't even have the, um, the um, actual uh, demonstration of the, I mean, the, the studies, but let me just talk about one of the things you can do is a contrast shower. And um, this, you go into the, the shower as hot as you can stand it for one minute and then you turn it to cool for 30 seconds. And then you turn it back to hot for another minute. And you go back and forth for three exchanges of hot and cool. Now, if this is the first time you've ever tried this, you do not start with hot, hot. You start with like warm and cool, back and forth, warm and cool, back and forth. And as you go on, um, doing additional treatments, um, you can increase the temperature, the heat, and the cool. Uh, so do uh, exchanges of three, um, three, at least three to four, finishing with cool, and do it three times a day. So that's an example of using a contrast shower that can help boost your immune system. Well, there's a Bible verse in Psalms 103, verses two to five, that I think is, 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 is something that we can hold on to. And the psalmist says, bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, heals all your diseases, redeems thy life from destruction, crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, satisfies your mouth with good things, healthy foods, so that their youth is renewed like the eagle, a long and vibrant life. We serve a God who loves us and cares for us and has designed us in such a way that our immune system can fight for us. And we know that over 80% of people do exceptionally well, even when exposed to the virus. So let's take heed and let's apply these principles that God has given us, the water, the sunshine, the exercise, the supplements, and all these wonderful things so that we can have life and have it more abundant. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Lee Gibbons. What a wonderful presentation. Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions? Actually, I just have one quick question. Hemp seeds. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It doesn't have the um, psychoactive, uh, none of those components in it. You can find it at a health food store. It has the omega-3 fatty acids, uh, even at the ABC. Okay. All right. I, I have a question. Yes. Um, is there any way you can check your own blood sugar levels? Uh, if you have a meter, a uh, blood sugar meter, they're not even expensive. Um, and you prick your finger and you take a drop and if you went to the diabetes uh, center um they provide them they're pretty reasonable maybe i don't know 
and then you the, the meat the you know uh, so that's one way you can you can do it yourself. Yeah. You can test your blood sugar and see where it is, and um, mm -hmm. adjust your, your lifestyle accordingly. Mm -hmm. And I have two more questions. Can we get um, elderberries in Bermuda? Yeah. Uh, no, you can't get elderberry in Bermuda, and it's not the fresh elderberry. Um, you shouldn't consume fresh elderberry. It's a dry elderberry. You can definitely get it on Amazon or anywhere. And um, probably I can get a recipe to show you how to make your own elderberry syrup. Oh, okay. um, once you buy at the store, quite expensive, but you can make your own quite inexpensively and uh, should work just as well as the uh, elderberry that they have at the, um, at the stores. Okay, and my last question is, um, have, you had, have you had any bad reports um, about taking zinc? Do you know uh, any bad reports? I'm not aware of any. If, if you keep it within the doses that we had, no more than what we have, what we have outlined there. And if it's like you, you, you have like a cold or something, your immune system seems to be down, then I, I, you know, I would take it for that period of time until you start feeling better. The zinc along with the vitamin C, mm -hmm. uh, like a thousand to two thousand milligrams, along with the, you know, about. 15 milligrams of zinc, plenty of water, the uh, contrast shower, uh, or uh, create your own uh, syrup, or um, the uh, Russian penicillin, yes, and yes. these sorts of things should be should be helpful uh, short term. Shouldn't right. have a problem with that. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. I just have a quick question. The vitamin C packets that they have um, that yes. you pour in water. Are those yeah. good to take? I guess it depends on what's in it. If it's, if it's not anything, um, you know, toxic or anything. Some of them, they, will, they have a flavoring to it, you know what I mean? Or uh, a sweetener or what have you. Then yeah. you probably need to be concerned about what are, what are they using, right? Alternatively, you can just get the regular vitamin C that doesn't perhaps taste great or bad. You know, you can get uh, just plain vitamin C. Um, um, they have it powdered form or uh, some that can dissolve in it. If it doesn't, or some it doesn't even know. Some of it's like, it's like a powder and you can just scoop it out, mix it in with something and drink it down. Um, or you can have it like uh, in uh, capsule form. Thank yeah. You. So you, you can read it. Uh, Dr. Gibbons, we have a question about vitamin D. I think you said 800 milligrams. Uh, yeah. If we are taking less than that, does it mean that it's not effective? Or if we're not going to take a minimum of 800 milligrams, does it make sense to take it at all? Well, in, we, in bought a, a, we bought a bottle that is only 50 milligrams, so that will require us to take quite a bit of the vitamin oh, D. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's very minimal. I mean, I would probably, is it, is it like uh, in a gel cap type thing? Yes, it's a gel cap. They're tiny, but that would mean that we would have to take quite a few to get up to the 800, but we do yeah, want to I take wouldn't, the minimum amount. I wouldn't amount. probably do it that way. Is, is there anything else in there besides the um, vitamin D or it's just vitamin D? It's vitamin D3. Anything else? No, it's just pure vitamin D3. Yeah, um, it's, it's, I mean, you bought it, so, you know, use it, but if, if you, um, it's not going to give you a whole, whole bunch, you know, um, okay. what we do know is in the studies between uh, 800 and a thousand, we're, we're, we're quite effective as, and as effective as even more than that. So, um, I mean, take it what you have, but. Uh, being that you got it already, so, uh, but it's it's definitely nowhere near than we think no. of a therapeutic doses of uh, vitamin D. Okay, I'll get I'll get something better. Thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. I, yes. I think that yes. she says has this here. I didn't get that feeling. Oh, can you see that? Yeah, yeah, you're good. 
2,000 international units. Oh, yeah. oh, yes, yes. I have that same vitamin D3. Yeah. It's 50, 50 milligrams. micrograms is the, uh, the international units that I'm talking about, right? Okay. And so that's fine. 2,000, 1,000 IUs, okay? So, Deb, Deb, this is fine, Deb. That's fine. Oh, so uh, what you're holding up there, I'm, I'm referring to two different measurements then. So Correct. I think on there so it says maybe the, one or two a day. Is that enough? That's right. Yeah, if you got 2,000, that should be fine. It's the IU. You see 2,000 IUs. That's that's the therapeutic dose. Okay, so you're fine. Oh, oh excellent. Thank you so much. Thanks for clearing that up. All right. Now, is it true that um, African Americans mm -hmm. tend to um, have a vitamin D deficiency? Um, I'm not aware of that. People who tend to be in colder, um, because you remember, vitamin the body makes vitamin D as exposure to sunlight. So individuals yeah. in, in colder. So there's not that much sunlight, they tend to have more, and then maybe even some African Americans have uh, the best way to know this is to get to get the level check if you're you know concerned about that. And um but I I haven't been read anything that said that we're more likely to. Okay. Hello. Yes, thank you. Christina Thomas. Hi, uh, yes, I think they say that Af African American levels of vitamin D is low because in America, they don't get the sunshine as much. Plus they're indoors a lot and they are yeah. constantly driving to where they need to get to. So, you know, it's from the house to the car, uh, from the car to work, the car to school. So they're not outdoors. Like you guys, you have your beautiful weather in Bermuda. Yeah. In America here, they don't. So that's why I'm retired. So I go outside and I'll sit in the sun about two, three hours just looking around at the birds and everything, you know, so. Oh. That's intentionally trying to get my vitamin D because my sure. vitamin D levels are, are normal according to my doctor's blood works. I don't need to take the supplements. So I just sit outside sure. to get the real vitamin D. But the Americans, yes, they are indoors a lot. They're yes. not like the West Indies and, and so forth. Okay. Good um, presentation, by the way. Very informative. Okay. Go ahead. Yes, Go ahead. I agree. I enjoyed it. Um, Rosman, yes, just wants to say something. Yes. Go ahead. Um, and on on vitamin D, um, in public health, we're also um, encouraged to remind people that if you are darker in complexion, you actually need more exposure to the sun. Um, we usually think on the contrary. Uh, so if you're darker in complexion, you need more exposure to the sun to get the appropriate amount of vitamin D. That's if you're getting it naturally. And if you're lighter, um, you need to have more. I have the figures for that less. I have the figures, but I don't have them with me right now, but it's, it's quite significant, the, the difference. So please um, note that, that if you're lighter, you stay out in the sun less to get the appropriate amount and percentage of um, vitamin D that you need from the sun. And if you're of darker, darker complexion, you stay less. Longer. For the shade, longer, longer if you're darker. Also, um, I was thinking, yes, we heard a lot about um, keeping the immune system strong. And of course, this is the best defense against any infection. Um, but we also need to remember that free of charge or almost free of charge is running water and that we let's continue to take very seriously the hand washing, uh, the what 
checking of surfaces, um, watch where we put our hands when we go to the store, wash our hands when we come get home. And um, that will go a long way in helping to mitigate or reducing um, or getting of infection. So if we, if we come in contact with the virus, everything that we've learned will help us defend, but we also can mitigate um, problems by preventing the virus in the first place. Mm -hmm. I'm done. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyone else? Hello. Yeah, I have one question. Um, there were a number of things, um, Dr. Lee, that um, um, you mentioned that we could take to uh, boost our immunity. Not like that. Not like that. Uh, is, it is it possible for us to, um, like, I guess, over medicate even on these natural things? In other words, you're taking, you're trying to take all these things, you know. Um, and a combination? Uh, it's possible, but um, I guess it, it depends on where you're at. You know, if you're, I mean, obviously if you are experiencing uh, symptoms of the immune uh, compromise, you, I, would, I would throw everything, you know what I mean? Okay. Um, but if you're having a low zinc and a low vitamin C, you know, um, you're doing a garlic combination and you're doing a contrast shower, it should be fine. It's not like you're taking um, 20 different vitamin pills. You follow what I'm saying? Right. Uh, it's a few uh, supplements, but most of what I've shared is a lot of, you know, um, lifestyle things, you know. So if you're eating more of the vegetables, the greens, you know, you're doing a contrast shower, you're having the, uh, you know, the um, Russian Panacin or something like that, you know, that's fine. And a couple of supplements, you know, it's zinc, it's vitamin C and maybe selenium. And so those, those few things I think are, are fine, you know, and I, and I, I don't okay. see any issue with that, the, that there. Appreciate that. Uh-huh. Okay. okay. All right. If there's no more questions, I know we have gone over the time, but the information uh, was quite a bit and um, yep. quite a bit. something that we definitely needed um, in this time. So we thank you um, for spending time with us, Dr. Gibbons. We also want to take a moment to say um, welcome to Sister June. First time for her being on our line. And um, so we just want to say uh, welcome back home. <laughs> At least for our Rockaway line. <laughs> Hello, Sheena. Yes, Marie. Yes, yes, I just want to say one thing. I invited my friend, Christina Thomas. Yes. She's my special guest. I invited last minute. I want to say thank you that she came on and joined us today. Here, there she is. Uh, this young lady here is my very special friend that I went to school with. Oh, okay. And she was a midwife for one of my children. Oh, in wow. Alabama, yes, my dear friend Christina. She's a nutritionist, also. Yeah. Well, welcome, Christina. Uh, Marie's special friend, Christina. We're glad that you can come on and join with us. I enjoyed it. Very yes. Good. Man. <laughs> Which state are you in? I'm in Huntsville, Alabama, and I go to Oakwood University Church. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Well, welcome from Rockaway. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, if there's nothing else, um, then we will have Brother Arnold give us our closing prayer. And we will invite those of you that have been on the line to come back again next week at 7 o'clock. Nobody can hear me. Um, we just also, again, want to welcome Sister Isabel who joined us tonight. Amen. Yes. Yes, Sister Isabel, and we will continue um, to pray for you and your family and also for 
Sister Rosemont, we will keep you also in your family in prayer um, throughout the coming weeks. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Dear. You have our condolences. I'm the sister from Huntsville. Yes, Sister Christina. So, might get to meet somebody someday. Okay. <laughs> okay, Brother Arnold. Okay, um, Chris, Christina, you're on mute. Okay, I met Dr. Gibbons before. I know just about most of Marie's family. Mm -hmm. All right. Nice seeing you. <laughs> All right, Brother Arnold. Okay, this time shall be great. I'll go ahead and I'll fall again. We want to thank you for. Uh, the information that you have given Dr. Gibbons to, uh, to give to us it will help us to apply it because we expect to be able to endure it. So I'm asking you at this time, Lord, to be with Sister Isabella, Sister uh, Gibbons' family also, who have lost a loved one and others. I'm asking you to strengthen them, comfort them, and uphold them in a mighty way. I'm asking you to be every family that is represented here tonight. We want to thank you for, for your word. Lord, we want to thank you again for the wisdom. Thank you for the knowledge. Thank you for understanding. I'm asking you to be each and every one of us. And as you go through the man of next week, I'm asking for your spirit to go before us. Help us to to deny self and I'm asking you to put us in your plan and help us to, to apply it and share it with others that they may come to know you personally as the Lord and Savior. We thank you, we love you, we adore you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you everyone for coming out. I just want to ask you. Okay. Go ahead, Henry. No, no, it's Chuck. Um, just a quick thing. The recipes that you had up, I don't know if anybody asked this already. Are you able to provide them to those on the chat? Uh, sure, I can do that, I guess. Because yeah. I know some people are probably gonna be interested. Also, I put up one just now on the elderberry recipe. It's a little video. So right. a good one. So just to help you out. Um, yeah, that was about it for me. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks. No problem. God bless. God bless everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right. Be safe during this week. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night.